Test, <laughs> test. Me, my, mo, me, mo, mo, mo. Test, test, test. Ah. Welcome back, everybody. It's been three weeks, probably, since uh, I don't know. I've been, I've been blacked out drunk the entire time. <laughs> it's been summer. I've just been in a comatose layer of whiskey. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. But you understand what I'm going at. So... <laughs> You forgot to, I forgot how, how to speak. Enunciate. I, I forgot how to enunciate. I'm anxious. The market's crashed, but didn't it's crash. Back. It's but back. it's back a thousand points today. Um, I don't know what's going on. I'm panicking, and then I'm not panicking. And I'm crying, and then I'm laughing, and uh, this isn't good, Rodney. Um, how how have you been the last two I've weeks? Been wonderful. Three weeks? No, not. Well, I'm glad to see you're stable. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. And then we got Donald Trump, apparently, uh, who's ready to become our next president. So that's good. Yeah, um, that's great. People really love him. Um, yeah, it would be pretty funny if he won. I think <laughs> at this point I'm like, you know what? He could win. <laughs> he could really win. <laughs> He wins, it would be like, oh, this is where we are. <laughs> I don't know. He, he, the problem with him is he's saying things that need to be said, and then he says things that nobody should say. <laughs> like, he'll say something like, uh, the system's bought, like, the political system is rigged, and people, you know, sell out, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll say, Mexicans are rapists. So it's just like, you, you can't see yourself out, buddy. <laughs> so. Yeah, when he said, when I heard that sound bite, I was just like, he must be just kind of trolling everyone, right? <laughs> That's the conspiracy theory out there, right? That he's working for the other side, or he's just... Well, I, I sometimes wonder if he also is just trolling people, just because he's like, I'm fucking rich, I can do it, say whatever I want, so he just doesn't give a fuck what he says. That's true. That's true. He has that ability. Because he, he's not going to say he doesn't feel that way after he says it, because he never backpedals. He's just like, forward, forward, forward. Yeah. People kind of like that, though. But you wonder if, like, afterwards, if he's laughing, he's like, I can't believe I said that. Like, <laughs> I think he goes back afterwards and is like, I can't believe people like applauded that. <laughs> He's like, holy shit. I'm What's awesome. wrong with these people? <laughs> I need more ties. I bought a Trump tie. A Trump tie? Yeah. What's that exactly? It's a, he, has, he has a line of ties. He doesn't wear your ties? He has a line of oh, his own a line. ties oh, okay. he mm. Trump. Well, in this Neck picture, ties. he's not even wearing a tie. He's trying to look cool, I guess, for everybody. Saying, I'm cool, I'm relaxed. I like that he's wearing these hats he wearing now. These, shirt, these truck these like trucker sh hats. What does it say? Make America great again. It's <laughs> awesome. He's really coming down to like the the, the common folk, if you will. <laughs> he's a common man, isn't he? I think so. It is kind I'm of sure Bernie Sanders beats out Hillary Clinton or uh, what's his name? Well, we got Joe Biden now making the uh, news or headlines. Um, the funny thing is, I don't mind Joe Biden too much, um, and he's more mainstream. But that's the thing I don't like about it is like, I think the Democratic Party sees that Hillary's going to have her problems, mm -hmm. so they're trying to get somebody in there that's not Bernie Sanders, which I can kind of understand. But for me, kind of liking Bernie Sanders, I'm like, oh, they're trying to block him out. <laughs> he might have a good enough voice. There's a lot of fucking yeah. people that are really keen on socialism right now. Socialism, woo! No. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't like real socialism. I like freedom. Yeah. We need freedom and we need to get rid of this oligarchy. We don't live in a capitalistic society. Yeah. And the fact that we keep calling it that is like destroying the idea of capitalism. That's uh, true. Um, I was listening to somebody talk about the markets today on Tom Hartman. And he kind of made that point. Because um, you know, Tom Hartman's from the left. Almost, he's almost like a guy for Bernie Sanders. Like, it's almost like they're on the same payroll. Uh, but the guy talking, the economist they talked to was very clear in saying, it's like, we don't have a free market, like, a free market the way it's supposed to. Like, right. The way they kind of protect the market and whatnot. But they're still saying capitalism is bad. Uh, no, not this, not this uh, what's it called? What would you call him? The guy, the, the expert, the economist, that's the word I'm looking for. The economist mm -hmm. wouldn't be necessarily a socialist, but the people interviewing him would be from far left socialist arm. 
So it was interesting to see that they actually brought in a person who was kind of kind of left, but at the same time was like, well, it's not a free market. Like, so the point is, I think smart economists <laughs> know that it's not a free market like it should be. And I think people on the left should realize that the free market isn't necessarily evil. It's just kind of how it's regulated or what's going on to some right. extent. Oh, it should not be regulated. Right. So, because that's uh, China's problem, which is what we're in right now. I just feel like they keep throwing stuff at it to keep it afloat. Well, they're going through a huge change. They're going from just a very poor country to a country with a larger middle class. Right. So they're trying to stop just manufacturing and start consuming too. And mm -hmm. That's a hard shift. I mean, they'll get through it eventually. I mean, all the other countries that we've supported through outsourcing of our manufacturing, whether it be Japan, <clears throat> South Korea, you know, um, Thailand. Right. There's several countries where they've really improved. I mean, that's how they started, though, was poor manufacturing and... It attracted us there, cheap labor, right? Yep. And, uh... Next is Africa. Africa! Yeah, if they can get their shit together. So North Korea and South Korea almost blew each other up last week, right? Apparently but, that hap is happening all the time as well. Really? So uh, it was just kind of over-hyped? Possibly, I don't know. Yeah. It was Friday, they're like, they're going to start a war! And then, like, Saturday, you see the picture of them shaking hands. I'm like, damn, you news people, you got me. <laughs> you got us again. You scared the shit out of us. <laughs> and then we could talk about the great live shooting that happened yesterday. That was some pretty dark stuff. Yeah, did you watch the video? No. I watched, I didn't, I didn't want to, and then I was like, I'll just watch it. I'm like, yeah, we'll see how evil people are. Yeah. I watched the video, like the GoPro video, and it doesn't look even real. That's the thing. I like, didn't like about it. <coughs> like, I don't know. Uh, about the idea of it anyway, like. Like, I don't think it's a fake, like, I don't, because it seems like it's, I, how do you fake a bunch of people that, like, I don't. I feel like someone will come out and be like, these people are still alive. Like, <laughs> right. I'd see them like, <clears throat> some people are saying it's fake. Right. I've seen some of those reports where people are like, it I haven't read strange. them, but I saw the headlines and I was just like, eh, <coughs> I don't know about that. That was one of the reasons I wanted to watch it because I'm like, eh. And it's pretty weird because he like, just walks up to him and he's just holding a gun and they like don't do anything and they just keep doing their story. Yeah. And then they start reporting again and they just steps back and start shooting all of them. And you're like, that was really weird, right? Yeah. I thought when I saw the story that it was really a weird turning point for like human society. I think this stuff has been on air before, but for a lot of people, for me, like to have someone shot on live television, it almost like desensitizes you. You know, it's a kind of like seeing something. Like when 9/11 happened, it was such a big shock. None of us knew how to deal with seeing that, and it was real. And now you see someone literally live, like shot live on television. It's kind of like one of those jarring, traumatic things. If you had watched it or seen it, I feel like it would kind of have a weird kind of psychological effect on you. I don't know. I've watched so many videos of people getting shot and killed and murdered. <laughs> well, that's not good either. I don't think that's good. I don't know if it's not good because I think if uh, you want to live on this planet, it's not good to also just act like it's not happening everywhere. Right. Because there's people that are murdered right around where I live on a daily basis and it's like I don't know it's part of life you gotta rec we live in a very violent world it's not good but statistically speaking it's actually been coming safe I don't know if that's true anymore with how much war has been breaking out all over the earth right now but right up until this point it's been a very very safe time actually to be alive it's just the media really glorifies and runs with these stories I mean back before you wouldn't see stories like that spread very far right outside and technology you couldn't just videotape it and put it on it wouldn't work that way. Right. But I mean, fucked up shit's been going on since the beginning of... Right. It's been going on all the time. So I don't think it's like people are getting I don't know if it's good to promote it, though, or have it so easily accessible. Even though it happened in the past, I don't know if it's... It's not a good thing that it happened in the past, either. It's just like... It, I guess I get worried about copycats, people. They see it and they want to do it. Like, people that are fucked up, too. I don't yeah. know. That worries me. So, I don't know. I just saw that yesterday. And I was like, well, that's not a good sign. Um, um, I didn't get that excited. It's just like, up, oh, just another fucking <laughs> shooting. 
That's true. That's, it is what it is. But then again, it's like we, we've got to the point where it's like, oh, it's just another shooting, which I think is terrible too. Yeah, but I mean, statistically speaking, there's less of them going on. It's, it's just that we talk about them a lot more. It could be. It's, it is. It is true. That's a. I mean. I mean. That's a fact. These weird, like, mass shootings and. Mass shootings, or I mean, gun violence in general in the United States has right. been on a downward trend for like the last twenty years. I guess what I get worried about is this weird kind of psychopathic, kind of kill for the the reasons people are killing each other are fucked up. I think more fucked up than before. I mean, I think in the past it used to be like crime, maybe not, but it just this is the impression I get it would be like crime related or like you've slept with my wife or but now it's just like I fucking hate the world or something crazy and. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stress in the world. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of upset people that don't understand an outlet. And I think a lot more of that has to do with, uh, one, like you said, we were kind of mentioned that point of that they focus it or glorify it. And that's the media. If the media just didn't talk about it. It's like, just keep it within that community. Don't show it to everyone. Right. Like, no one ever, everyone doesn't need to hear about some asshole that was upset at, like... Yeah. That's the thing I thought about too, is how quickly that video got out there. I'm like, they got shot at what, 6.30 in the morning, 7.30 in the morning. It seemed like 11, it was everywhere. Like, that's just the world we live in, but there's some guy that got paid to like, go give me that footage. It kind of reminds me of when I used to work for TMZ and how I, I hated it, because it was like, go get the worst footage you can find and go ruin someone's life or something like that. TMZ's definitely weird. But TMZ, the celebrities are also kind of paying for PR too. That so whole society seems so weird but, out there. I don't know how you lived out there for so long. Uh, I think I would have hated that. <laughs> Just all the fakeness and like, yeah, that's stabbing people in the back for money. Yeah. It, Nightcrawler. <coughs> Nightcrawler was a good movie. If you, it's on Netflix now. I fucking hated that out. movie. It was so creepy. It was so creepy. I fucking hated it because it was so creepy. It's like, fuck that guy. <laughs> There's a lot of creepy people out there. I think that's the moral of that whole segment. Fucking creepy people go away. I don't like creepy people. Oh, yeah. I like, I don't, yeah, who, I'm going to fucking GoPro myself shooting some people. <laughs> it's like, that's what the new GoPro commercials are. Mass violence all over the planet. GoPro yourself when you're on your assassination <laughs> spree. It's like, oh, great. That's where we're Well, they made the connection to, like, first-person shooters, a, a couple news outlets. You know, I'm like, great, encourage all the teenagers who are depressed to go out in first person themselves. Well, that's what that's weird about those new virtual reality machines. Right. Those video games are getting so close to reality because it's like, why? I, I know we've talked we've talked about that, haven't we? It's like, oh, yeah, why? we can talk about it again because now it's re relevant again. We can give ourselves a pat on the back and say, oh, it is work. Like, people are getting... Well, it's like, why would you want to play that game? Right. If it was really felt real, like, oh, I want to go and run around and shoot a bunch of people. Okay. <laughs> let's get you outside, buddy. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's go, go hit play. a tennis ball. Yeah, let's, go play base. <laughs> let's go throw a ball. Let's go have a catch. Yeah, have a talk. We're gonna play some. You can talk jam. about your problems. Can jam it I'll up. I'll give you a beer. I don't care if you're 16. We'll come. It'll be all right. <laughs> let's jam the can. Oh man. So uh, there's jets going to Europe again. There's some more of that going on. Um, I think Russia was moving more stuff to Ukraine, right? You Dude, about there's that? so many arms sales going on. <laughs> just, Not just arms sales, but that we were moving physical jets to Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. It's how we make a lot of our money. <laughs> we sell shit to other parts of the world that fuck them up. And then and we, we take the money. <laughs> we, we issue them credit to buy said weapons, so they have to pay us money and interest on that. And then they blow all their shit up. And then we offer them more credit to rebuild the shit that they did have before we sold them mm -hmm. the stuff that destroyed it. Yeah. And we keep making that money. But not we. These <laughs> fucking bankers that keep fucking us too. This the bank fuckers. Yeah. We need Teddy the Trust Buster back. You know, I thought the same thing. Um, we need a, a Teddy Roosevelt back. Someone's like, fuck you, we're breaking, oh, you're too big? Oh, we're just gonna take it away. You get a little piece, you get a little piece, oh, you're not managed, you're small. Good night. Good night, Irene. He, he's on Mount Rushmore for a reason, you know. Oh, everybody. Things Woo. will be okay. Woo. Our parents might get wiped the fuck out. Wiped out. <laughs> I couldn't help but post this week. 
about what was going on a little bit. And my friend's father, who's probably retiring like right now, as you know, the market dropped 1,100 points right out the gate on Monday, and then it bounced up. But it still finished at, what, 600 points down or something? Anyway, <laughs> I post about it, and he was so pissed off. I'm not, it's not funny, because it is like his re retirement and stuff, I guess. But I, it made me, it didn't make me laugh, it just, I, la I guess it's just a reaction I have. It's just, his anger was so real, I was like, oh, that's kind of scary. He thinks 1,100 points is bad. Well, he just was, Wait, like, mad at, like, the people using the system or whatever. It's like, these fuckers. <laughs> he didn't say these fuckers, but I feel like to sum it up. <laughs> it's just, I think it shows the ignorance of the world. That, so even believing in the stock market is like a way that you're going to maintain your wealth. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, in our generation, growing up, seeing what we've seen, I I'm like don't want to touch the market with a 10-foot pole sometimes. I think... I mean, I think what we need to get back to is building communities again. Like, if people were taking their money and investing it all in their communities, and then you're building a place where you can live and grow, and, like, you have families, and you take care of each other, and you don't worry, like... I think there should become a point in time where people don't have to keep paying bills. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you have to keep paying bills? It'd be nice not to have to pay any of your bills. That'd be cool if we get there. But now I just feel like we're so in debt to whatever. The machine, if you will. It's like... We're always going to have bills, it seems like, for a lot of people. It seems like a, a, we dug ourselves in a hole, even as a nation, and even on an individual level, for a lot of people. It's just like, oh, we're fucked. So now what? <laughs> It'd be great if we could get there. I just I, think something needs to change first. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's what we need to change, the way we live. Right. We need to change these types of buildings that we're living in. We need to fucking forget this shit and build new, which seems weird. We just need to reset. <clears throat> this reset might be really good for humanity. Oh, it might yeah. be what's necessary. Like, you know, people are so worried about global warming and overconsumption. And it's like this could be a reset that, like, rattles us, kills a lot of us. But, I, I mean, know. I think that's one of those things I was thinking about. It's like, what we're doing is not sustainable in some way. Damn. Either whether it's spending too much or... Climate change, like we're the way we're living in society, is gonna fuck us. I think no matter what, and I think nobody knows how to change or what to change, or people do and they don't. Their voices don't get out there, so it's just kind of like gonna hit the wall. Enough, I don't think there's enough pain. People are, are aver, you know, pain averse. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, well, you know, oh, you know, if things get bad, we'll we'll adapt, yeah. we'll change. I, just, I think it's gonna be a, a rough transition. Maybe. I hope not. But at least we're still pretty young. Yeah. If they just can milk this thing for like 30 more years and then collapse his own world, <laughs> like, sons of fucking bitches. <laughs> I feel like that's what the last generation just generation's been doing too. Kicking down the road. It's like, oh, we can just last until, you know. We're dead. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll be good. It'd be so funny if we get reincarnated and there's little babies, but they all remember and like, <laughs> it's like, here you go. Here's your world, motherfuckers. <laughs> No, we should have better. <laughs> you're all gonna die by the age, you're all gonna die before the age of ten with dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> I like that in an evil way. Oh, that's so <laughs> awful. Oh, I, I like the idea of reincarn like the reincarnation thing coming back and being like, fuck. <laughs> Speaking of evil things, like you're talking about shootings being bad, and it's like, oh, but it's like not that many people die every day in this country of shootings a few people it sucks and it's not good i'm not saying it's good i'm not i'm not trying to underplay it but i heard <coughs> today that at least i don't know if it's just in africa or if it's worldwide but it was a statistic it's apparently from is it unicef or i don't know some organization that's involved in procuring healthy water but oh. five thousand kids under the age of five die every day from Drinking bad water, drinking not bad having water. access to clean water. 5,000 kids every day from not getting water in this day and age. And like, we talk about like our problems here and we're like, oh, but then like, you think about that, it's just like, holy fuck. And it's... Before the age of five. Such like, a shame. They're little babies, basically, dying of that. Like, how do you even explain it to them? That's the thing, you can't. It is hard, even for us folk, to explain that away 
But we don't yeah, we just fucking lo- care. It's like we lost. We spent all this money on military and blowing fucking other people up. We, I mean, if we wanted to, the, the, the developed world could fix that problem and the emerging world probably pretty easily. But we're like, it's not our problem. They should learn how to do it. But we could show them how. We could. Oh, that'd be easy. I think. <laughs> it's like here's fresh water. We uh, lost, they said, a proverbial like $2.1 trillion last week. And you think about, I guess it's not real money, though, really, because it just depends on when you sell it. Well, it's all just ones and zeros in computer yeah. systems. It's nothing real. But you think it's you all, can just it's put... It's a Ponzi s- scheme. It's totally fake. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a charade. It is. That's... We all give up our lives for ones and zeros that are totally fake in, in bank accounts that people are making out of thin air. We give up our time and energy for a totally fake system. It's, Nothing's real. It's weird. It's fucking bizarre. That's why we don't have a sense of community anymore. Like we would all be doing the things we need to do if we just lived in a community, but, but we give a fuck more about each other because we'd realize how we're not. We think we're so in, independent. Yeah, but we're, we're yeah. Not. It's that kind of like blissful ignorance thing because if you don't know about the five thousand people dying in Africa, and you're happy-go-lucky, Mister American. Yeah, we're in this little world. <laughs> you don't feel bad about it. <laughs> and I'm fucking part of the problem. Like, I'm not saying... Right. I'm... But I was just thinking, of, like, if we have some of that funny money, why not give it... To, especially so much. Just give them, like, a plumbing system and have them... Like, microloan people. Don't they have microloans in Africa now? Well, they, I was listening to this guy who has this organization who he's in the Congo trying to rescue, me, rescue pygmy people. His name's mm-hmm. Justin Wren. He's an uh, MMA fighter. He's quit his career, moved over there as like a missionary. Not even like a religious missionary, just like someone who's trying to help them. Mm-hmm. And the story of the pygmy people is pretty interesting because they just get like enslaved and abused by other Africans in the Congo. Oh, man. And uh, they're... T- yeah, it's a real sad story. I didn't know any of that was going on. Well, I guess that shit's always going on. The media yeah. just doesn't talk about it. But <clears throat> that's what he does. He goes over there and just digs wells. And he teaches the people there how to dig them and what to do and he's been helping raise money to buy a piece of land for them so it's like here's your land like it's yours right now you cultivate it you put in the wells you replant the trees you start figuring out how to make things and like start an economy here and these people are starting to like learn how to dig wells like they're starting to put in wells on their own mm-hmm. and they're creating jobs for themselves because then they can like you know get paid to put in these wells in different areas and it's like and they can have fresh water for the first time in their entire lives where people would walk 40 he said 45 minutes to an hour to get dirty water sometimes or a lot further than that and these women would have to carry these like 45, 50 pound jugs back that far and yeah. so there's usually the women these little women carry these huge things of water dirty water that they get sick from right and are like whoa it's such a different world and uh, you're right we're so like detached from it and then do you remember when that Coney thing got big a couple yeah, of years ago yeah it just went away yeah that guy went crazy I got really into that too. I was like, this I was is into really it too. I thought it was cool, and then I just then my conspiracy alarm went off when he went crazy. I'm like, they didn't like that he brought that up, and then they like gave him drugs, <laughs> and then he wound up crazy in the street. Because <laughs> I feel like, because like I feel like that was a good thing. We should we should really turn our political power to. It's something we could fix. Yeah, like relatively easy instead of starting wars with people that we shouldn't be starting wars with <laughs> or something like that. Or even just starting wars in general. But then again, he did get really famous really quick, and some people can't handle that. So I think that might have been part of it. But I like to play with the idea with like, you never know. The that. machine doesn't want you to like. Don't bring up this story. We have our own political, like, goals, and we don't you you know messing with that. So I'm sure that fucking happens. But I don't know if that was a case of it. But right. I, just, I I when I think back to that story, I'm like, we could like easily fix Africa. We really well not like the upper part, but like. The, they lower part. give them the tools to fix it themselves. And that too, yeah. <laughs> so we're not just, but then we wouldn't be able to just steal from them. Not we, but like right. uh, the things that allow us to have cheap goods. So we are part of the problem because we like to go to the fucking stores. And buy <laughs> yeah, too much know. shit, Rodney. There's too much shit. I think uh, pooping's good though. <laughs> Pooping does feel good. If you don't, I poop, feel like I have my best ideas on the toilet. I people don't know say why. it's sometimes the best place to think. Yeah, you just get there and you think. <laughs> Clear your mind. And okay. clearing out all the bad shit. They pulled my show's season finale last night because it was so similar to that shooting. I don't know if you read that. Mr. Robot, you probably weren't watching it, but... 
they pulled that show's finale because apparently the main character in that show shoots somebody live on television. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, that's weird. But um, that's why they obviously couldn't play it because that just had happened. But well, what are they going to do? They're going to air it next week. Oh, so it's still going to be... Yeah, they're not going to cut it, cut it. I but. think that's stupid. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll air this eventually. <laughs> I just found it bizarre. I'm like, that's weird. But, and I was actually... I had to catch myself being like, Derek, someone... People got shot, calm down. Because I really wanted to see the finale. I was like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. My Wednesday night show. <laughs> I heard some... <coughs> there was someone talking about that on the radio. About how it's weird how we want to watch that in television. <coughs> mm. It's not that I wanted to see that necessarily the scene. I just wanted to see how the season finished. And I had no idea that he was going to go crazy and shoot somebody on live TV. <coughs> well, how do you know he's going crazy? He's not just killing someone that deserves to die. Well, that's the thing. I feel like in Mr. Robot, he would have shot a media because he's trying to take on evil people in the media and the uh-huh. conglomerates. And I, I would think his character would only shoot somebody if he deserved it, or she deserved it. And maybe he shot somebody in the media because they were probably propping up this evil corporation that killed his father with cancer. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe that. But, Spoiler alert! Yeah, oh, I didn't see it. This is my guess now that we know that it was so similar to what we saw on TV. <laughs> yeah, but I meant even for the whole show. Oh, for the whole <laughs> watch it. Like, Spoiler alert! Well, Dude, you... I just gave you the first season. <laughs> that's that's pretty much a standard. From the I'm get just, go, I'm just kidding. It's a very good show. I've only watched it for a couple episodes. Did you? Oh shit! Maybe I have to give you away one. No, I, everything you said, I knew. I was okay, just like, good. You haven't watched, it, but you're like, yeah, all of that's pretty much explained in like the first episode. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I enjoyed that. Mr. Robot, Mr. Robot. I just like that theme song they sing. Mr. <laughs> Robot. That should be the theme song. <laughs> the Mr. Robot guy is kind of weird. The, the main character, young guy. No, the uh, the, the other guy who we met. Like on the subway train. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, like, that's that's the name of the show. It's <laughs> named after that guy's jacket. Uh, you know, you know, you're you're a couple episodes behind. <laughs> oh, some more will come out. Oh yeah, yeah. So, why it's called Mr. Robot? Yeah. That's why I'm, I'll keep my mouth shut in case <laughs> you're like, you do follow. You're like you're, you're, like, you're and it will be a spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. The last two episodes, I guess it would be six and seven, or whatever, the last two episodes, a lot came out that was very interesting. Oh, dude, so I can watch some good ones. Yeah. Although I can kind of see it coming. So you might see it coming too. But I enjoyed this. There's some powerful scenes in there. Oh, you know, that's another thing that could happen since we have nothing to talk about. Should we be worried about hackers hacking our... Uh, Economy, right? Like that guy. <laughs> You're like, I don't care. <laughs> so fucking fake anyway. Someone Bring deleted some of the fake zeros. Someone moved <laughs> some of the fake ones and zeros into another fake account with ones and zeros. You're kind of like, uh. <laughs> what? Is that, that kind of what you guys do every day? That's kind of what you guys do, right? <laughs> yeah, but they did it. We didn't do it. Oh. Burn him. <laughs> Burn him alive. Man, I guess nothing else happened. <laughs> I don't know, so much fucked up shit that happens. Like, it I just, read headlines now, and I'm just like, um, yeah, I'm so numb to everything. I'm like, oh, dude. And things are just going to keep getting worse. <laughs> Did you see Vladimir Putin went in, like, deep sea diving? I thought that was kind of amazing. Did he? he yeah. Went, he's like, yeah, watch me. <laughs> Did he do it naked? <laughs> yeah, I think he had a shirt off. <laughs> He's like, give us a little... Everyone else, is, everyone else is wearing, like, these big tanks. And he's just under there holding his breath. He's like... Pussy! <laughs> his yeah. eyes, like, popping up his yeah, head. just like a sweet <laughs> knife. Like, you know, just a little black speedo with a knife. <laughs> he kills a squid. Drags it ashore. Yeah, he seems like a cartoon character. He's like this... Something disappointing happened to me. I, I would follow Russell Brand in his updates... From time to time on YouTube, and he basically gave up a week ago. He's just like, "Yeah, we're done. This is too depressing and hard, and change is too hard." Who, who said that? Russell Brand, you know, the uh, English comedy actor. 
What, he stopped the show? Yeah. He was doing the truce for a while. I guess he, he was trying to affect the, uh, the UK elections. Didn't really have any effect. And his last episode was really kind of depressing when I listened to it. He was just like, the change that we need is going to have to come through like us spiritually. Like, this, this isn't working. The, the, the system's too hard. <laughs> he didn't Hard's say it like that. Collapse. But, yeah. And well, that's the other thing, too. And you, you start thinking about like, who on the inside knows what's about to happen? Not that that's a thing, but part of me likes to play with oh, that idea. I think it's a and thing. I'm like, celebrities, rich people. Celebrities don't know shit. But he I dated think, Katy Perry. And I don't think many celebrities And Katy Perry's shit. related to somebody big in the media. She could be. So, I don't know. He just... But it, his sentiment being where it's just like, uh Like, it's just, I feel like the sentiment a lot of people have is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Or at least people who are paying attention. Like, I think maybe our crime is paying too much attention. Which yeah, shouldn't be a crime. I don't but, think we really know what the fuck's going on either. Yeah, but... If, it's like you said, you try to pay attention, it fucking deflates you. Sometimes I get really juiced up about it. Yeah. It's like, whoa! Well, that was me, like, last Friday when... Dow dropped 530 and South Korea and North Korea were like, we're gonna fight. I'm like, shit. And then China's gonna get pissed off and get involved. What do you think China does? Do you think they do anything militarily? Yeah. I know our friend posted on Facebook recently about it. He's like, oh, and China's building, like, these war islands or whatever. Oh, they've been doing that for a while. Yeah. yeah haven't we talked just about like, that? We talked about it a little bit. Mac Powers. <laughs> I think he was talking about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're like, who? <laughs> oh, that Mac Powers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have a feeling they're going to take over uh, the South China Sea. I feel like a lot of those countries down there are fucked. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> they're China. You have a pretty large military. Yeah. Which a lot of the weapons came from us. I, I was going to say, like, but we sold them those weapons. Well, Syria just shot down an Israeli F-16 bomber God, using that a whole... Russian S-300 air defense system. Apparently. That whole mess. That whole mess. That so, Middle East there. So a, a U.S. made, Israeli owned jet got shot down by Syria who bought a Russian made air defense system. We okay. Got, so we got paid. Nice. At least we got paid. <coughs> that seems like the weird thing, right? ka -ching. People make money off war and they say, war profiteering is illegal. Isn't war profiteering illegal? <laughs> Uh, it can't be. Because everybody does it, right? I think... Oh, we haven't actually discussed any of the um, Republican candidates since the last time. It's been that long. Uh, there was a Republican debate back at the beginning of July, August. <laughs> August. Um, I thought it was great television. I'll say that for being... Was it 14 months before the election? <laughs> I didn't watch any of it. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't care. But at I all. feel like there's something to be pressed out of it. It's just like the questions they asked because there were so many people were so they were just softball questions. They're just like, how do you feel about puppies? And they're, they're like, always, I love puppies. They're always softball <laughs> questions. I feel like at this point. Oh yeah, I guess you're right at this point. But uh, it's so damn early. But 14 candidates or 16 or something. That's that's a lot. So many of them have no chance. What are you doing? <laughs> I think on... Uh, they just want to write books. That's the thing, yeah. So uh, go I write for president. Write uh, a book. It felt like four of them, at least, they're like, in my book, I do blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and they're like, what's your idea on this? And they're like, well, you're going to have to read my book <laughs> to figure that out. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm on to you, sir. <laughs> I'll talk about that later in the election. <laughs> I mean, I won't be running, but... Buy my book. book. <laughs> who... who uh, Let's see, here's the question. Who would you prefer to see? Well, I can answer your question, okay. I think. You're asking, like, who I kind of like. Well, just, like, who if would I you like prefer? Or, like, who would you not be embarrassed by? <laughs> I don't know if I really like any of them. Like, or I'm like, oh, everything they think is spot on to what I think. Like, I don't think I have that at all. Because yeah. I'm much more of an independent. Like, I don't really like anyone that's... Politics in general gross me out. But if I had to pick... If I had to pick, mm -hmm. it would probably be 
I like Ron Paul more than Rand Paul, but Rand Paul is interesting to me because he's a little different, but he's a lot more bought than his dad was. Mm. I like Benjamin Carson. I think he has an interesting perspective on some things. I completely disagree with him on some other things as well, though. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm not all about it for him. And that's about it. The I most mean, interesting part of that debate was when Rand Paul and Chris Christie got in a fight about the NSA. Well, not, I mean, they kind of verbally sparred about it. And that was literally the most confrontation on the stage the whole night. Like, what did they say? Well, Chris Christie's like, you don't make the decision to protect anybody, because I guess he's a governor, so he's like, you got to make these security decisions, and you don't know what it's like. And Rand Paul's all like, I know what it's like to obey the Constitution. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Yeah, um, I love that, though. <laughs> uh, and... It was kind of funny to see Chris Christie try to be that character where he's like, I'm the big blowhard. He's a fucking douchebag. And uh, he, he does come off as a douchebag to me. Dude, he spent some, uh, some ridiculous amount of taxpayer money on fucking food at NFL games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that came out how much? It was something like absurd, like forty or $50,000 or something crazy really? like that. Oh, that's insane. Let's Google it real quick. Google that. <laughs> CBS Sports reports $82,000. Holy hell. Washington yeah. Post, $82,000. So 80, he spent $82,000 of taxpayer money. Do you remember when they shot him in the, the like luxury box with the Cowboys owner that one game? Yeah. I hope that wasn't part of that. <laughs> I'm just figuring the Cowboys owner like paid for that. I don't know if that's true when I hear that statistic. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if that's, if, that, if that's real, like government, I like, guess so disgusting. Yeah. I mean, they're talking about how we need to cut back. <clears throat> we mm -hmm. can't afford to pay our teachers. Can't afford lots of things. Like, we need to restructure pensions. We need to restructure all of these things. And then you find the guy at the top of the pile in the state government in a certain state is doing shit like that, spending 82 grand on fucking food. Yeah. At football games? Why is he even at the, all those football games? Like, who are you? I feel like that's an impeachable offense, right? I don't know. I feel like so many people are untouchable. Yeah. Like, you, who does the DA actually go after in like big cases like that, or the attorney generals of these states and federal levels? They're fucking seem like they're such pussies. They go after like whistleblowers, people yeah. that are t telling people about the bad shit that other people are doing. They go after them, and they don't go after any of the real bad people. Yeah, they get paid by the guys that they we're not supposed to report against, right? <laughs> Is that what's going on? Well, it seems like part of it's because of bureaucracy, like. Elected officials are only in office for so long. Like some of them stay in office for a while, but the vast majority of them aren't there for very long. But the bureaucrats that are just there and have like careers, like 30, 40 year careers, like think of how much influence they have because they've been there for everyone. Like the one, the people that move up in those organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, they kind of set the tone. I mean, if you're an elected official, you come in and sit in a meeting, and here's all these people that have government clearances to tell you kind of how it is. Like they're the ones running the show. That's creepy. But you're you're not wrong. I don't I don't I imagine you're not wrong anyway. Oh no. What? Kraft recalls more than two million pounds of turkey bacon products. <laughs> Kraft? Yeah. It's a good thing I don't eat their turkey bacon. <laughs> Why do you, you need a turkey bacon? Uh I used yeah. to eat some kind of turkey bacon, I forget which brand it was. Was it Kraft? I don't eat I don't think it was Kraft. I think it was that Mrs. What's her face? There's some kind of I think this is something turkey. I forget. Aunt Jemima's turkey? <laughs> that's pancakes. I was going to say no, Mrs. Fields, had, but that's cookies. She has her own turkey, too. Does she? Yeah, Aunt Jemima's I, I, would, I would remember that if it was Aunt Jemima, though. It has a picture of her with a shotgun. <laughs> and, then, and then the back has her like carrying the turkeys. <laughs> Just head cut off, blood dripping down her back. Just <laughs> big smile. Pancakes in the other hand. <laughs> No, dude, she has like pancakes, it's turkeys. Oh, man. What were we talking about? <laughs> I think we were talking about... Uh, oh, we were talking about Chris Christie. Oh, I was going to bring too much money and being a dick. I feel like um, working in Harrisburg, uh, I'll come across people who work in the state government, obviously. And this I can sense gross. they're all a little nervous. Nervous? Of the new uh, wolf mm -hmm. administration trying to cut back on like spending too much money on stuff. He's you not trying do. to cut back. He wants well, to spend more. I meant like personal expenses. You know how people would do what you're saying? Yeah. They seem really, like they, it feels like they're being watched more closely. So that's good. Um, the pension thing you brought up earlier, I did an insurance case. It was actually a workman's comp, but mm -hmm. 
this guy was a state employee and they're running the numbers for how much he should get paid for his pension and whatnot. And both of the lawyers in that deposition stopped and went off the record and was like, He's get how, he gets how much for doing this? And like, I can't say numbers or anything. But it's just the sentiment you can't, was... You can't say numbers? I, I, I don't know the math behind it. Because they started going over the numbers. They had an auditor there explaining how the numbers worked and everything. And I, my eyes kind of glazed over. I was just like, uh. Because <laughs> I didn't have the paperwork in front of me. And I was just like, uh. Right. Um, but yeah, the sense <laughs> I got from just listening to it was, this doesn't seem right. Or it seems very convoluted. And maybe it has to be, but... I could understand why both of the lawyers were like, that's fucked up. <laughs> so they thought he should be getting paid like much? Uh, I think so. I think both of them think that way. <laughs> They're like, uh, this guy's getting away with this. <laughs> right. He walks in, he's like, fine. <laughs> well, look, guys. <laughs> On that point, you know the guy who shut up the place in Colorado? Uh-huh. He got 12 life sentences in 3,318 years today. And I'm like, just kill him. Like, that was my sentiment today. I'm like, just kill the guy. Like, I, I know I'm not a big fan of death penalty, usually, but I'm like, he obviously did it. I don't know, the life in prison thing for that. I don't know, I don't know how you feel about that either. I mean, when people <laughs> He's obviously it, not getting out. I would hate, I think it's almost worse to leave him in prison for the rest of his life. I don't know, I think you just get a different, you have a sh- your life changes, but you, I think you, <coughs> it's probably still, you make the best of it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure some people have a really bad time in prison, but here's some people like, when people do really atrocious things, I don't know, like a shotgun to the back of the head, just like do it the old fashioned way. Just good night. So you, you, want, you would favor death penalty for that guy? Some people, like in that example, I don't know that case very well. I know it's a mass shooting in the movie theater, yeah. so yeah, but I mean, people like that, if it's definitely, like, I don't know how much evidence they had that. But if it's definitely like this is without a doubt, like there's video cameras, it's like he admitted to it or whatever. <clears throat> there's all these eyewitnesses. Yeah, something like that. <coughs> I really don't have much sympathy for the person. So it's like, yeah, why do they, I don't know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth? Yeah, it, it, there is certain circumstance where I'm like keeping them in prison. Like I, I feel if there's like a chance for them to reform, that's okay. Not to kill them. But I feel like if this person, he might be able to reform, but I just know he's never getting out. So I feel like it's almost worse that he's in jail for the rest of his life. But he should be in jail for the rest of his life. So it's just kind of like, yeah. put him out of his misery, almost. <laughs> Not even like put him out of his misery. It's like, that was a failed experiment. Just delete that. Yeah. Delete it. Get it out of here. Right. Uh, more depressing stuff. Here's something for you. More Americans killed by guns since 1968 than in all U.S. wars. Oh, that's, sorry. This is a fact put out there. This is actually a political fact. Check. And it's, and political fact is saying true. The same what? Saying that that's true. New York Times' Nick Kristoff writes that more Americans have been killed by guns since 1968 than in all U.S. wars combined. And then political fact says, we say true. Yeah, but what's it? It's saying just in general, killed. That seems like it's somehow they're manipulating. Is that saying in global conflicts here, everywhere, there's more people getting killed by guns than in every war combined? I'm talking about Americans specifically, not people. I know Americans, I mean, but there are Americans all over the world in combat. Apparently there's 289 people shot every day. Holy shit. But that's including cops shooting people, and I think that's the vast majority of them. <laughs> that would make sense. And the vast majority of them are sh- unarmed victims of police shootings. What? Okay, so like in World War One, we lost 116,000. In Vietnam, we lost 58,000. That's pretty Wait, say that dramatic. Again. In World War One, we lost 116,000. In Vietnam, we lost 58,000. It was a much lose, smaller war. And how much did we lose in... World War Two. Four oh five three nine nine. So they total up one point three million deaths since our country's creation and war, and then they tally up one point five with guns since nineteen sixty eight. It has been going down though. The eighties to the ninety or to the end of the it's century. All the fucking really drug violence, man. It's all the gangs and drug violence. If they just fucking legalized drugs, all that shit would go away. 
It's like we're doing the whole prohibition thing again. They were doing documentaries recently on one of the news channels about how cocaine became illegal and stuff like that. And they were playing with the idea of like just making drugs illegal. And how crack was made so much worse than coke. Yeah. And I don't know. It's what after black people. <laughs> it did. It's not funny, but I'm it's, laughing because it's true. It's like white people. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It it's the same <laughs> like chemical, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I watched a documentary on. Like, Are you selling movie. crack? No, I remember. I, it was uh, what was that one dude, that black dude in California, who was like, was it Ricky Ross, the real Rick Ross? I Go with it, like man. I Rick don't know. Ross, I think, was like the major kingpin. He like spread coke and stuff. Yeah, and that was something that he talked about was how if you got caught with <coughs> crack, the punishment was so much higher than if you got caught with cocaine. And the white people did cocaine, and the black people did crack. Oh. I don't know, man. I feel like we're watching a powder keg slowly over, boiling over. Well, the economy, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, sorry, that was a, we didn't start the fire <laughs> joke. North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. Okay, I like Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you go. I was just like, <laughs> you're like, okay, dear. <laughs> um, well, Rodney, I know you gotta get up early, oh. and I feel like we've uh, depressed yeah. ourselves enough for the night. Yeah, really <laughs> slow, like, is it? Oh, 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 me, or. <laughs> <laughs>